So we proposed kind of a new metric for analyzing the anonymity of schemes that takes into account the fact that the adversary can use everybody's transactions and like the entire network status to, to try to de-anonymize people. Wallet Wasabi, coming soon. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Crypto Songs 101. Um, today, we have Jillian Fenty with us. Thank you for joining us today. Having me. A change of face, female to female. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get into a bit about you. Tell us about yourself, your hobbies, your likes, what you did before Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, so I'm an assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon right now, uh, and I just came from, wrapped up a postdoc at the University of Illinois, and um, I'm generally interested in privacy-preserving technologies, so I've been working on that for the last couple of years, and that's kind of how I got into Bitcoin and crypto in general. Ah, so what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? Um... I guess, okay, so since joining uh, faculty life, a lot of, there's been not so much free time, but I do enjoy playing soccer. No, oh, that's good. You're an active girl. At least you get some outside time. That's good. Favorite ice cream? I oh, um, I'm going to go with pistachio. Ah, surprise, surprise. Okay. All right. Uh, so you've always been in... Uh, like you've been studying all this time, what do you do before Bitcoin, like job-wise, progress? Yeah, so I, I was a student up until 2015, end of 2015, wrapping up my PhD. Uh, and my, I worked during my PhD with some coding theorists, information theorists, uh, and then I did my postdoc from 2015 until just last year. Um, so I've basically been <laughs> preparing for this for a while. I haven't uh, worked in industry. I've been in yeah. academia the whole time. Couple of years in there. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, what got you interested exactly into um, big cryptocurrency or Bitcoin? Do you yes, remember that time? Yeah. So I'd spent some t a couple of years working on. Um, privacy preserving algorithms or anonymity preserving algorithms for social networks. So trying to understand, can we build a social network that allows people to post messages without other people being able to figure out who posted the message originally? Okay. So, um, so I was working with some of my great collaborators at Illinois and Berkeley on trying to design some of these algorithms and give some kind of theoretical guarantees about how well is your privacy preserved. And so um, after working on this for a while, we were trying to think, well, what are some systems that can benefit from these kinds of algorithms in addition to social network? And okay. then across um, Bitcoin and found that right. Bitcoin's kind of peer-to-peer -peer network actually uses very similar um, broadcasting and gossip protocols to some of these social networks as well. So uh, the peer-to-peer -peer thing, what is that is so the way the Bitcoin network works today is you have a bunch of nodes or computers that people are running and they connect to each other directly. So what that means is you don't have kind of a central computer that's controlling everything. Um, everything is done kind of naturally, like the way that we form friendships or social connections. It's all done in, in a very distributed way. And so um, that's... Uh, so in, I guess, networking, this is called a peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, fair enough. Um, I was made to understand that you basically came up with a skeletal framework for Dandelion. So I'm curious, what is that? How does it work? What problems does it solve? Yeah, so um, Dandelion is interested in uh, the problem of Bitcoin users being de-anonymized. And so when I say de-anonymized, I mean uh, in certain cases, an adversary who is well positioned within this peer-to-peer -peer network could figure out that a particular transaction 
was executed by someone with a particular IP address. And um, this is problematic because sometimes you can use IP addresses to identify or at least narrow down who was the human using that IP address. Oh, okay. And breaking so, privacy. Breaking privacy, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so this is a privacy vulnerability. You wouldn't want your you know, credit card statements to be out in public. Um, the, so that's the problem that we were interested in. And it turns out that the reason this happens is because of the way that transactions actually spread over this peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, and the way they spread is right now that I will send my transaction to uh, my neighbors on this network. So I'm connected to some number of other computers and I'm go going to spread this transaction to those computers and they'll forward it to their neighbors and so forth. So um, this, is, this is very symmetric in the sense that I, if I have you know, eight neighbors, I'm gonna send it to all of those eight neighbors at roughly the same time. So if, you know- So you can't really track down who started the transaction? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, no, that, this is what's currently done. So right. the problem is that if, if, let's say, you know, a few of my neighbors are malicious, are trying to de-anonymize me, then they can use the time at which they received my transaction to guess that I was the source. If they all get it at roughly the same time from me, they can guess, okay, I was probably the source. Right. So what Dandelion does, uh, and this was work with um, some excellent collaborators, um, Shailesh Venkatakrishnan and Pramod Vishwana. Um, what Dandelion does is to make that spreading a lot more asymmetric. So instead of sending to all eight of my neighbors, I'm gonna send to just one of them. And then that neighbor will forward to it one of its neighbors and so forth. And this happened, so you can visualize this transaction moving kind of over a random line over the network um, for a couple of hops. And then eventually the one, of the one of the hops in this stem, we call it, is going to start spreading the message like before. So it'll spread it to all of its neighbors and they spread it to all of their neighbors. So this spreading pattern looks kind of like a dandelion. You have kind of a random ah, yeah. like a straight line, and yeah. then eventually, and then eventually you spread out to everyone. Oh, okay, I understand that now. Um, why is it not already in the core? Uh, and it's in the core as well. So we are working on an implementation right now, and are hoping to um, eventually get it or some version of it into core. Um, so it has some nice theoretical anonymity properties, and we're working right now to make sure that it's um, secure against more complex adversarials, adversarial models than what we originally analyzed. Um, so we're hoping to get that out soon and uh, hopefully work with the, the core developers to make it into something more meaning those who are at the center of what, what is core. Um, so the developers for Bitcoin Core, um, which is one of the main Bitcoin wallets today. Okay. All right. Um, what were the challenges you faced coming up with the dandelion? So I think one of the biggest challenges, I guess, was actually modeling the problem. Um, so one of the things that is different in Dandelion compared to other anonymity solutions is the uh, metric for anonymity. Uh, so a lot of times in the literature, when we analyze um, when we analyze anonymity protocols, our metric for anonymity is the following: What is the probability that some adversarial party could link your transaction to, link a given transaction to the source of that transaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is very reasonable. But what's been happening in Bitcoin and in other cryptocurrencies is that you're starting to see entities that are kind of monitoring the network as a whole. Um, and so they're looking at lots of different transactions from lots of different people. And mm -hmm. 
metrics that people have traditionally studied don't really capture the fact that you can use information from other people to better de-anonymize you. So for example, if there are two transactions and mm -hmm. the adversary knows that they came from two different people, um, which you could guess using various um, analytical tools, um, then knowing that one of those transactions was executed by you gives the adversary some information about the other transaction. Mm -hmm. right? So that makes it more likely that that other transaction came from me. From you. Yeah. So we proposed kind of a new metric for analyzing these, um, for analyzing the anonymity of schemes that takes into account the fact that the adversary can use everybody's transactions and like the entire network status to, to try to de-anonymize people. And so that's a more powerful, that's giving the adversary more power and it changes what kinds of algorithms you want to run um, because of that. Okay. And at the moment, Dandelion is not part of Bitcoin, as you no. already said. Do you see that happening in the foreseeable future? Uh, hopefully. Um, I think it's a very low cost algorithm. It doesn't require any complicated protocols and it gives some nice anonymity guarantees against these kinds of mass de-anonymization. And so I think it's a, it's a reasonable thing to add to a, a cryptocurrency's networking stack. So, that's uh, awesome. so fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, that sounds good, that sounds good. Um, any projects you've worked on before, um, Dandelion, that, you, that really helped towards this one, I think? Um, yeah, so like I mentioned before this, I was working on some projects related to anonymity and social yes. networks. Mm -hmm. And that was um, definitely more on the theoretical side, uh, but kind of some of the ideas that we developed there helped inform the way we thought about um, dandelion and the kinds of problems that we're dealing with. Okay, and how can how should we privately broadcast transactions today? <laughs> how should we? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to highlight the point that there are there's kind of two levels of anonymity that people should be aware of. Like if mm -hmm. you are concerned about your own privacy, then using, you know, kind of classical anonymity tools like Tor or I2P, those are good solutions that are designed to protect individuals. Um, but if our goal is to protect everyone in the network um, mm -hmm. with kind of weaker statistical level guarantees, then I think Dandelion is a really natural thing to do. It's compatible with the existing broadcasting protocol. So it's not going to break anything if we add Dandelion. Okay. Um, so you should have no problems implementing the... Yeah, we've tested it out. We've tested out a few nodes that are running Dandelion in uh, the Bitcoin network. Okay. And it, it works fine. With, it plays nicely with other, other protocols, other things that other nodes are running. And it doesn't seem to add too much latency. And it's also tunable. So if someone wants to have you know, less privacy at the, and faster broadcasting, then they can make a shorter stem. You know, of the wow. So it's, okay. it's, very, it's flexible in that sense. Um, and it doesn't add too much overhead. So I think it's a reasonable okay. thing. When is the final EIP? Um, Getting questions as <laughs> we go on. Uh, so we have not been assigned a, a VIP number, but we're hoping to get um, like send something out in you know, the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Wow, sounds very promising. Well, good. Oh, we'll see. Um, good. Fingers crossed. Like you said. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of your expectations of the future in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. What do you hope to see? Um, well, I think there's a number of applications where cryptocurrencies are really well suited. Um, one of those is public key management. 
I think um, cryptocurrencies would be really great for that. Um, like supply chain management. Situations where we don't necessarily want to assume trust in any third party. Okay. Um, and both of these examples are cases where currently we have systems that require a lot of trust in a centralized party that maybe shouldn't be trusted. Trusted. <laughs> okay. Um, the back. <laughs> uh, and I think uh, payments are another really interesting area that I, I hope uh, cryptocurrencies can um, can be can impact, uh, and I think we're seeing some of that starting right now in, in the cryptocurrency community. But I I would love to try to push the technical barriers and see if we can build really fast payment systems. Um, payment systems in which you know everybody can use. Yeah, everyone can use. Anyone can exchange currency. It's um, right. not as uh, regulated or monitored um, as current payment systems, um, and and then definitely you know the the excitement about smart contracts I think is is warranted. Um, there's a lot of so several of the scenarios that I mentioned like public key management and um, supply chain yeah. management I think are are going to benefit from having smart contract infrastructure. Okay, um, in your own words, can you explain what is a blockchain? Uh, a blockchain is a data structure that tracks a history of events that have ha that have happened. So, in particular, uh, and so the way it's used colloquially is to mean a distributed database okay, that's maintained over lots of across lots of different nodes, and the key is that it should be difficult for malicious parties to kind of rewrite history in this in this database and so we want to be able to append to the database so we want to be able to add things to the end of our sequence um, but we don't want anyone to be able to change things in the middle of our sequence you broke up a little you don't want anybody to what no. uh, we want people to be able to append, which means add things to the end of our sequence, but we don't want right. anyone to be able to change the blocks or the, the data pieces in the middle of our sequence. Okay. okay. It's like a sequential distributed database. All right. Um, and our final question. Um, what did Gregory Maxwell contribute to Dandelion? Oh, Gregory Maxwell gave us a bunch of great suggestions about um, some practical considerations that we needed to think about. And um, he asked a lot of good questions about adversarial attacks that we hadn't necessarily thought about or foreseen. Um, so, okay. for example, relating to some of the um, some of the networking attack protections that currently exist in Bitcoin Core. And we hadn't thought about how those could be abused if if nodes were running dandelion. And so um, he's been yeah, really great. Very it. insightful. Yeah, very insightful. Okay. All right. Thank you. So check us out for our next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was All great. right. Take care. You Bye, too. guys. Wallet wasabi coming soon. known as uh, mixers or tumblers, where you spend to the service um, and a large number of people spend to the service and then you spend out of the service and it breaks that link um, between your uh, current address and your past address.